Promoting the growth of the tabletop sports hobby, this is Imagisport. Hello there and welcome to a special edition of the Imagine Sports Showcase today. I'm Derek Jones. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. So today, in honor of the 2024 Olympics that are currently going on in Paris, we are going to run a playthrough of the classic game Decathlon. Now this is a game, of course, that is no longer officially uh, available uh, in print. Uh, you may be able to uh, snag a copy on eBay, but also a free copy of the game was made available back in 2020 in issue number two of Sports Sim Magazine, and that's the version that we're going to use to play this classic matchup that never happened. That's right, the matchup between Dan O'Brien and Dave Johnson. Dan versus Dave. For any of you who are around my age, and I turned 53 later this month, uh, you were bombarded with ads back in the early 90s uh, of the marketing campaign where Dan and Dave were supposed to go head-to-head -head in the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona. But alas, that matchup never happened in Olympic competition, mainly because Dan O'Brien did not qualify for the Olympic team that year. Uh, pretty much what happened was he passed on a few of the uh, smaller heights in the pole vault competition, and he never cleared his first height on that, which basically took, out, took him out of contention uh, for, the, uh, for the Olympic team that season. Now, Dave uh, made it to the Olympics uh, during the 1992 uh, Olympic year in Barcelona, and he wound up uh, with the, a bronze medal uh, while he was competing with a broken foot. Uh, Dan O'Brien made immense four years later in Atlanta, though, whenever he won the gold medal in the decathlon there. All right, so basically, uh, I'm going to go to the uh, game table in just a moment to start day one between Dan and Dave. Uh, I did not bother to uh, get a set of Sports Illustrated dice. Those are very hard to find uh, online. Uh, they do have a key. Uh, whenever you buy the Sports Sim Magazine that has the Decathlon game in it, they give you a little key where you can actually use normal D6 uh, and turn them into Sports Illustrated dice. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use an online dice roller from Andy Lewis. And I'll put the link to that roller uh, in the uh, description of this video. I have covered up uh, parts of the roller that we are uh, not going to be using for today's purposes, but there's going to be one number on the side for Dan and a number on the side for Dave. So let's uh, not waste any more time. Let's get down uh, to the stadium to begin day one of our decathlon battle between Dan O'Brien and Dave Johnson. So here we are getting ready to start day one here between Dan and Dave. A couple of notes for you here. Uh, the two cards for Dan and Dave uh, I copied off of issue number three of Sports Sim Magazine. More details on uh, how you can get Sports Sim Magazine uh, a little later on in the broadcast. And also up above on the graphic, as you can see, there's a side for Dan and there is a side for Dave. So the two digit numbers beside the Imagine Sport logo are the Sports Illustrated dice numbers that we are going to be using. So the uh, black numbers that you see there correspond with the black SI die, which has the numbers 1, 2, and 3 on it, while the gray numbers will constitute the two white dice, or the white and yellow die, depending on which set of SI dice you have, and the two numbers uh, combined there will give you a result from 0 through 9. Uh, the two red 6s at the bottom of the scoreboard here are going to be the stamina points that are utilized for each athlete. Each athlete gets six stamina points uh, per day, and they will use those stamina points in uh, a couple situations that uh, we'll go over as they arise in the game. And right above their names are their score. Now, you're wondering why it's not zero to zero right now. Well, 
you can't really see it on this side of the card because of the way I copied it, but at the top of each uh, athlete's card is a number that refers to their handicap. Because uh, the, the decathletes that you get uh, in Sports Sim Magazine uh, come from different eras. In order to even the playing field a little bit, each uh, decathlete got a handicap. So basically the way it's to be used is uh, once you get a final score, just uh, add or subtract the handicap from the final score, and then that would be your actual final score from the event. I just decided to do it ahead of time. That way we can kind of see... Uh, where each decathlete is at as we are going through the decathlon. So as you can see, Dan is ha handicap is a minus 162, while Dave's handicap is a 119. And another thing you can notice as well is that on the card, it kind of tells you how good they perform in each of the events, uh, ranging from poor to excellent. And just looking at those uh, qualities on both sides of the card, uh, Dan is uh, has the advantage in a lot of the events so the handicaps are going to be pretty accurate here all right so let's get going here as we start day one of the decathlon and our first event up is the 100 meter dash now each athlete has the choice either to play it safe to do an average attempt or to go all out now if you play it safe it prevents you from injury if you go all out you have a chance at a better time or distance but it does cost you one stamina point, and it also increases your risk of injury. All right, so I'm going to click the roll button on the Andy Lewis site here, which you cannot see on screen, and that will change the numbers, and that will be the dice roll. And as, and as you'll see, we'll be rolling the dice uh, concurrently for both athletes at the same time. Dan on the left and Dave on the right. So we're going to roll our first athlete, and so Dan has a 15 for his first roll in 100 meters. They're both going to be average for this uh, first one. And so Dan's time here is going to be 10.30 seconds. So we're going to go ahead and write that down here for Dan. 10.30 seconds for Dan. And for Dave, his roll was a 34. And so 34, he comes in at 11 flat. So... Dan with his average effort at 11 flat there. So now what we do is we go to the scoring tables, uh, which I did not copy. I just, let me just read them straight out of the book here. So for Dan O'Brien, a time of 10.30 means, means 1,023 points. So we'll put that score in there, 1,023 for Dan. And then for Dave, his time of 11 flat is 861 points. So we'll put 861 in his column here. So after one event, because of the handicaps, uh, Dave has a slim margin over Dan, 980 to 861. So now comes our second event, and that is going to be the long jump. Uh, three attempts uh, for a long jump and their furthest distance is going to be the one that counts here. So for their first attempts, we're just going to go with average attempt again, because uh, they're feeling each other out at the moment, so we will roll the dice. And so Dan rolls a 34 for his first attempt at the long jump. And his first attempt at the long jump, there is a gray box there, and that gray box means that he scratches, and then he went over the line before he took off. So he does not get a distance for his first jump. Dave rolled a 31, and so 31 on the average is 24 feet and 2 inches. So we will write down 24 and 2 for Dave. All right, on to the second attempt for both athletes. And once again, uh, we're going to go ahead. And so Dan's going to, uh, we're going to play it safe with Dan to make sure he actually gets a distance this time. We'll keep average for Dave. There's our roll, and it's a 35 for Dan, and so on the uh, safe chart, uh, cost him a little bit of distance there, because his second distance is going to be 22 feet and 5 inches. So 22.5 for Dan in his second attempt. Average attempt 
for Dave. He rolled a 27 this time. And that is going to be 24 feet and 1 inch. So 24, 1. So 24, 2 is still Dave's best attempt. All right, so since they both have a distance here, they're both going to go all out for the third attempt. And that means that they are going to be... Uh, and basically what that means is they're going to spend a stamina point. So here we go. All right, so 16 for Dan O'Brien, and he went all out this time. So that puts his uh, final attempt at 27 feet 2 inches. So 27 2 for Dan O'Brien. For Dave, he rolled a 28 on the all out. And that is 23 feet and 3 inches. So 23 and 3. So Dan's uh, furthest attempt was 27 feet 2 inches. So that means 1,133 points. So 1,133 points and he spends a stamina point. So now he is down to five um, for Dave. Dave's longest attempt was 24 feet two inches. So I'm gonna have to go to the next page to get that. And it's an even 900 points. So he will get 900 for that. Brings his total up to 1880. So now Dan has a lead. And of course, Dave spends a stamina point. So after two events here in the decathlon, Dan leads Dave 1994 to 1880 and on to the third event is the shot put same as the long jump three attempts longest one counts so uh, again we'll go ahead and for the first attempt we will do average for each athlete and we'll go ahead and roll the dice for the first attempt 25 is Dan's first roll on the shot put. So 25 with an average uh, shot put is 51 feet and 3 inches. So 51-3 for Dan O'Brien. For Dave, it's a 34 for him, and that's going to be a scratch. He went over, he went outside of the circle. So because of the uh, gray block that is right there. So, Dave scratches on his first attempt. So, on the second attempt, uh, this time uh, Dave is going to play it safe. Uh, that way he can get a distance. Uh, Dan will go average again. Here is the second roll. All right, 34 for Dan in the uh, average attempt. He scratches, so he does not get a distance for attempt number two there. And for Dave, Dave rolled a 35 on the safe column. So his second attempt is 44 feet and 9 inches. So 44.9 for Dave. All right, third attempt. They're each at five stamina points right now. Uh, they're going to go all out here for their third attempt. And so Dan O'Brien's third attempt is a 27 on all out, 53 feet and 3 inches. So 53, 3 for Dan. And for Dave, he rolled a 15 on the all out. And a 15 on the all out for him is 51 feet, 10 inches. So 51, 10. So on the shot put chart here, so for Dan, 53-3 is going to be on the next page. And that is going to be 865 points. So 865 points for Dan. And, we, and he spends a stamina point there. And then for Dave, his attempt of 51 feet 10 inches also is going to be on the uh, chart here, I think. 51, there it is. 51, 
51 feet and 10 inches. I might have to pause the video here while I actually try to find that amount. So Dave's result, uh, for some reason, is not in the book, but judging from what it was from 51 flat to 51 five, we're just going to uh, we're just going to say that Dave's is 839 points. So 839 for Dave there, and he spent a stamina point as well. So they're both down to four stamina points remaining, and Dan is still in the lead by 140 points. As we go on to event number four, which is the high jumps. So now the high jumps a little bit different. So basically, uh, each athlete will pick which height they start at, and they have three attempts to clear the height that they have picked. And then uh, once they get to a height where it, they, they miss it three straight times, then they are done. Uh, also, another thing, too, is... Once you get past seven overall attempts in the high jump, for each attempt over seven that you do, you're going to lose a stamina point. And so basically how that comes into play as well is uh, once you get down to zero stamina points, you cannot go all out for the remainder of the day. Uh, we're still pretty decent yet, though, because this is the next to last event for day one. All right, so for Dan O'Brien, his first attempt at the high jump, and you have like an average chance of success here and that kind of lets you know uh, where things are going to stand he's going to try he's got an 84 percent chance to get six foot six so that's what he's going to go with so he's going to start at six foot six with an average attempt uh, Dave on the other hand um, let's see here he's got an 84 percent chance at six foot three so he's going to go ahead and do an average at six foot three. All right, so once again, we are going to roll for both to save time. And once uh, one person gets exhausted with his attempts, we're gonna go ahead and just roll for the other person. All right, so attempt number one at their corresponding heights. All right, here we go. Uh, Dan with a 23, trying to beat six feet six. So a 23 on an average attempt is six foot eight. He clears it, so he's going to go to the next height. Uh, Dave has a 31, and so Dave's 31 is six foot six. He clears six three. So both of them are going to uh, up the bar here. Dan to six seven, and Dave to six five. And so Dan rolls an 11, and he is injured uh, on the average attempt there. So basically, this what that means is there, it's a number of injury points charged to the decathlete. So basically, what happens is a couple of things. One is Dan loses a stamina point. So now he is down to three. The second thing that happens is that now... If he wants to go average again, it's going to cost him a stamina point. Uh, if it's a safe effort, uh, it, no charge. But if he goes average, it's going to cost one stamina point. And if it's uh, all out, it will cost him two stamina points. So, so that comes at a price. So like I said, Dan is now injured. And I believe the... Uh, so basically, any remaining efforts for the current event, as well as efforts for the next event, the injury is in effect. So basically, so this time he's going to be injured for this event, and then also for the 400 meter run, and then it'll be back to normal for the uh, for day two. All right. So Dave rolled a 23 with an average effort there. Average effort for six foot five. So we go to 23 and six foot five. He clears it. So he moves on there. All right. So both are going to, uh, both are up once again. Um, 
So Dan is kind of in the lead right now. So he's going to play it safe at 6-8 just to make sure he gets the cross and he doesn't burn any stamina. And uh, Dave is going to continue to uh, do his average at 6-6. Six, six. So we'll go ahead and roll the dice once again. Uh, Dan's got a 22. Uh, 22 safe at 6-8. And he only gets 6-7. So that is a miss for his first attempt. Dave, on the other hand, is a 33. So 33 average out is six foot six. He will clear the bar there. And so he will move up to six foot seven. So with that, uh, so Dave will continue to go average here at six seven. Dan with his uh, second attempt at six eight. All right, so Dan's second attempt, playing it safe at 6-8, uh, is a 29. And so 29 is going to be 6-5. So, no, that, uh, so basically, that's taking his toll on him right now. He did not make his second attempt there. Uh, Dave, on the other hand, has a 33 Average on the high jump there, 6-6. Six, six. He does not get the job done either. He misses his first attempt there. Dan's got one last crack at the... Uh, he's got one last crack at the high jump at 6-8. Uh, he only has three stamina points left, though. So what he's going to do is he's going to go average for this last attempt, which is going to cost him... A stamina point. So that'll put him down to two stamina points now. Dave will stay average for his second attempt at 6-7. Alright, 36 for Dan O'Brien. Average this time is only 6-5. And so that is not going to do it. So Dan's going to max out the high jump at 6-8. Dave rolled a 23 average again at six foot seven, and he only went six five this time, so he did not get it on his second attempt either. So Dan's done with the uh, high jump. Dave's got one more attempt left at six seven, so he's going to go all out this time on his final attempt to see if he can get over. So we'll just use the number on the right for Dave's roll here, and that's a 14. So 14, all out, 7 foot, he clears it. So he gets to move up to 6, 8, but he is down to 3 stamina points. So now, Dan O'Brien's done uh, with the high jump. Remember, his highest was 6, 8. Dave is now at 6, 8. So... We'll go average for Dave's first attempt. Again, just looking at the right-hand number above his name. 26. So 26 is 6 foot 5. That is not going to do it. So that's a miss for the first one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try again. Uh, we're going to uh, do it average this time. And his Dave's roll in his second attempt is a 35. 35 is 6 foot 6, and he needs 6 foot 8, so that's a no-go as well. So Dave's going to go all out on this final attempt at 6 feet 8 inches. Again, it's going to cost him 1 stamina point. And that's a 21. 21 all out is only 6 feet 5 inches. That is not going to do it, so the stamina point gets wasted there. And so now they're both down to two stamina points. Let's go ahead and uh, see what their points are for this. So Dan cleared 6-8 was the last one. Or actually, no, 6-7 uh, was the last one that he cleared. And that's going to be the same for Dave. Dave and Dan both cleared 6-7, so they both get 822 points. So 8.22 here and 8.22 here. 
Okay, so now we're heading to our uh, final event of this first day of action, and that is going to be the 400 meter run. So in this event, uh, this event is going to be four dice rolls, one for every hundred meters. And so you'll see there's a time that corresponds to that. So both of them have two stamina points. But remember, Dan is injured for the 400 here. So what that means is that if he goes all out, that's going to, if he goes all out on one of the four rolls, that is going to be two stamina points, and then they can't go all out anymore. So for the first 100 meters, uh, Dave is going to go all out to try to get a good start, and Dan is going to Dan's going to keep his at average because, again, though, both is going to cost a stamina point because of the fact that Dan is injured. So here we go. Uh, 31 on Dan uh, with the average is 11.95 seconds. So 11.95 for Dan in the first one. And for Dave, 28 all out. That is going to be 12.45. So didn't really take advantage of that. And again, uh, stamina points spent by both athletes, so now they are both down to one stamina point apiece. All right, second leg. Um, so Dan can't really afford to spend any more stamina points, so basically he can either play it safe or it's just going to be average the uh, here on out. Uh, so for this part of it, He's still in the lead, so he's going to uh, he's going to go average once again, and that's going to take away his second stamina point, and so is Dave. Uh, Dave's going to go average as well, so he does not spend a stamina point on this one. Let's see what the rolls are. Dan got a 23 on average, and that's 12.05. And Dave got a 23, and his average, 12.10. All right, so, and again, that means that Dan is out of stamina points. So, and again, what that means is that he uh, cannot go, uh, he cannot go all out the uh, rest of the way, at least for, uh, at least for day one. So basically, he has to play it safe uh, from here on out. Dave, on the other hand, uh, Dave, on the other hand, has one stamina point left to burn. So for the third one, Dan's going to have to play it safe, and uh, Dave will go ahead and hit average once again. Uh, 24 for Dan, playing it safe is 12.30. And Dave, uh, doing average, is a 15, and that is 12.10. And so that brings us to our last leg. Dan's going to have to play it safe again. Dave's going to go all out to use his last stamina point. Here is the final roll. 15 for Dan, playing it safe, is 12.05. And Dave going all out is a 24, 12.25. So they both cross the finish line. Let's see what their times are. So we'll add up Dan's first. So let's see 5, 10, 15, 10, 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So Dan clocks in at 48.35 seconds. Dave, uh, 5, 10, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2, 4, 6, 8. And Dave clocks in at 48.90. So Dan still won the race um, by 0.55 seconds. But both of their times were pretty slow. 
So Dan's uh, 48.35 puts him at 892 points for that event. So 892 there. And then Dave had 48.90, and that is 866 points. So after day one, uh, Dan still has the lead over Dave, 4,573 to 4,407. And we'll be back with day two of this decathlon event right after this timeout. So Dan in the lead by 166 points as we uh, hit the end of day one in our decathlon event. And once again, just to remind you, uh, the version of Decathlon that I am using, uh, if you don't have it already, you can pick it up by ordering issue number two of Sports Sim Magazine. Uh, and sp the, all the issues of Sports Sim Magazine are available at lulu.com. Uh, and I'll give you the link uh, in the description of this video. Uh, normally, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head what the cost of the paperback version is. You can either get the hard copy or there all the issues are also available in PDF if you, if you would rather have that granted the PDF would be a, li e a little bit easier to print out if you wanted to print out the charts and the cards and all that uh, but anyway uh, just to show you where everything's at in the sports sim magazine series uh, issue number two of sports sim magazine uh, has the entire decathlon game including the charts the instructions uh, how to make your own d6 in the sports illustrated dice and eight uh, different uh, decathletes and some of the names in there include Bruce Jenner, Bailey Thompson, uh, Ashton Eaton, uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the pioneers. Jim Thorpe's also a member in that group as well. Then in issue number three of Sports Sim Magazine they created eight more decathletes. Dan and Dave that I'm using today were part of that set along with uh, Trey Hardy, Brian Clay, Tom Pappard, uh, Roman Saverly to uh, name others. They also, uh, in issue number seven, uh, two more cards were created, Kevin Mayer and Damian Warner, and then in issue number 11, Bob Mathias and Milt Campbell. Then in the most recent issue of Sports Sim Magazine, which is issue number 16, they put in the expansion that was made for the decathlon. They put in heptathlon, which of course is the women's version. And they also added some women's athletes as well. And again, you can find that in issue 16 of Sports Sim Magazine. And once again, all of the issues of Sports Sim Magazine, like this one I'm holding right here, can be available either in print format or on PDF by going to lulu.com. That's L-U-L-U dot -L -U And uh, normally, if you have a Lulu account, you'll, you'll if you're like me, you'll get an... You, email about every other week where they'll have some sort of discount code. Sometimes the code's 10% off, sometimes it's 15% off. Usually I wait for those codes to come before I order magazines from there. So in case you wanted to save a little money on that, uh, just look for those discount codes uh, before you go ahead and order. All right, so uh, the athletes are ready now for day number two. So let's go back down to the stadium to uh, commence day two of our decathlon battle between Dan O'Brien and Dave Johnson. And we're back to start day number two. So we're going to go ahead and flip over to our day two side of the cards here. And so once again, uh, their stamina points have been reset to six. And because uh, Dan's injury or in day one was only an injury number one, he is recovered and he is back at full strength today, at least to start out with. All right, first event is the 110-meter hurdles, one roll for each competitor, and they can choose safe, average, or all out. And they will both uh, choose, um, let's see how we want to, Dave's not behind by too much right here. So basically, but he really needs to, uh, he really needs to close the gap a little bit. But I don't think he is going to do it uh, here. So they're both going to be average for the 110 meter hurdles. So here's the roll. And it's going to be a 30 for Dan O'Brien. That is 13.60 seconds 
uh, for him. And for Dave, he rolled a 34, and so that's going to be 14.3. So Dave is continuing to struggle here. So 14, so 1360 for Dan means 1,027 points. And for Dave, 14.3 uh, is 936. So there you see the, the scores up there. Dan has widened his lead now uh, to about uh, 257 points. So um, Dave's going to need to pick it up here a little bit. All right, so next up's the discus. Just like the shot put, three attempts and you get your furthest one to count. Uh, Dan is going to go average here for his first attempt. Uh, let's see. Decision time for Dave. Because he is fair in the discus. They're both fair in the discus. Um, so basically, what we're going to do here is, uh, they'll both be average for the first attempt. All right, first attempt for both men here. 26 for Dan as he goes average. 162 feet. So 162 for Dan. 37 for Dave. 172 feet. So Dave with the early lead here. All right, so second attempt... We'll do both average again. All right, 28 for Dan. 161. So 161 for Dan. Dave rolled a 29. And that's 171. All right, so the third attempt... Um, They'll both go all out. They'll both spend a stamina point. And they both roll a 35. And what that means for both of them is that they scratched on their third attempt. So Dan's uh, farthest in the discus was 162 feet. So that translates to 857 points and so Dave had 172 feet and that translates to 921 points so Dave has closed the gap a little bit as they each are down to five stamina and now it looks like it's under 200 points is the difference now between Dan and Dave as we head into the event that caused the real-life event of Dan versus Dave not to happen, and that's the pole vault. So both of them are pretty good at the pole vault. So basically... To make things a little bit simpler here, and again, Dave is really has to pick things up here. Uh, they're both going to start at 15-1. So, at 15-1, Dan has an 88% chance of making it. Dave has an 82% chance of making it. Dave is taking a risk here by doing so, but this will make things simpler uh, as far as dice rolls are concerned, and also, he really has... He can't afford to lose stamina if he gets too many attempts in. So both of them are going to start at 15-1. And both of them are going to start with an average attempt. Alright, so here's their first, here's Dan and Dave's first attempt at 15-1 in the pole vault. Uh, 22 for Dan is 16-8. Uh, he clears that uh, rather easily. And Dave has a 26 and so 26 is 16 feet even, so that's going to work as well. So they both clear 15-1.
So next up is going to be 15 feet 5 inches. Again, they will do average here. 24 for Dan is... That looks like uh, 15 5, so he just barely gets over, but he does get over. And so for Dave, Dave's a 32, average attempt, 14 9, so he misses on his first attempt. Okay, so the bar is up to 15 8 for Dan O'Brien. He's going to give average effort here. And this is Dave's second attempt at 15-5. So again, they're both, they're both each down to five stamina points with two events left after this. Um, let's see here. Um, and they're both good on the pole vault. We'll stick with average for Dave for his second attempt. All right, here's the rolls. All right, 18 for Dan. Average there is a 16 feet even, so Dan clears 15.8. Dave, on the other hand, is a 37. Average there, 37 is 15.5. I think that's a 15-5. Yeah, 15-5. So he clears it. So they're both going to move on to new heights here. Dan is going up to 16 feet. And Dave is at 15-8. So here's attempt number four. 23 for Dan O'Brien is... 15-8, that's not going to cut it, so he gets his first miss in the pole vault. Uh, 20 for Dave Johnson on an average effort, average effort of 15-8. So he clears it. So now both of them are now at the 16-foot height. Dan is going to stay average as well as Dave for this one. All right, 36 for Dan, and it's no good. He does not, if it's NG there, he does not uh, clear his second attempt. Uh, Dave Johnson gets a 26, and that is 16 feet even. He clears 16 feet. So the bar is going to go up to Dave to 16.4. Dan has his last attempt at 16 even. So he's going to have to go all out here. That's going to cost him a stamina point. Dave's going to stay average for 16-4. Here's the rolls. 16 for Dan going all out. But it backfires. It's only a 15-5. And Dan is done at 15-8. And he loses a stamina point. So let's take care of that right now. Dave, on the other hand, rolled a 35 on his first attempt at 16.4. So Dave, with a 35, an average attempt is, that says 16 feet 4 inches. So Dave clears that one. So Dan's done. Dave gets to go on, if he wants, 16-8. And this is his seventh attempt. So after this, it's going to cost him stamina points. So he's going to stay average at 16-8. 20. 20 at 16-8 is only a 16-4, so he does not make the first attempt. He's got two attempts left. At 16.8. And he really needs to close the gap point wise. So he's going to keep going. But remember his last two attempts. Are going to cost him stamina points. So. 
We'll stay average again for the second attempt. And that's a 34. 16 feet even. And he's trying to get to 16.8. That's no good. So there goes one stamina point for Dave. And so... We'll just leave average again. No sense wasting two stamina points if we don't need to. Here's Dave's uh, third attempt at 16.8. It's a 36. And it's no good. Or no, I, I looked at the wrong card. Excuse me. 36 on Dave cards also a no good. So, so both men are done. So basically, Dave wins the pole vault. Clearing 16 feet 4 inches. Dan cleared 15 feet 8 inches. So 15 8 for Dan is 849 points. And for Dave, who cleared 16 4, 910. And it goes even tighter. 7306 to 7174, but Dave is now down to three stamina points as we head to our final two events. Event number nine is the javelin. Three attempts, farthest one counts. So you see the stamina points there. They'll go average on their first attempt. All right, 25 for Dan in the Javelin is that's a 201. So 201 feet for Dan in his first attempt. Dave is a 30, and that is 225. So Dave is making things interesting here. Second attempt coming up. Dave is going to stay at average. Dan, on the other hand, knowing he has to be 225, but his card's really not going to get it here, so he's just going to go average as well. Okay, so Dan rolled a 39. That's actually not too bad. 202 for Dan. So 22 for Dave. 219. All right. So decision time here for both men. I mean, Dan's going to have to go all out to see if he can try to get a better distance here. Dave has three stamina points left. He's going to save him for the 1500. So here's the third and final roll in the javelin. 32 for Dave, for Dan, all out is a scratch. So he does not get a distance there. 34 for Dave, average, is a scratch too. So once again, no distance. So Dan's final distance in the javelin is 202 feet. And that is going to translate to... 762 points. So 762 for Dan. And Dave, his highest was 225 feet. We're going to have to turn the page here for that. 868 points. So look out how close the scores are. Only 26 points separate these two athletes heading into the 1500 meter run our final event in this competition five dice rolls in this one one for each 300 meters 
The numbers here are the number or the amount of seconds that have elapsed. You roll five, you do five dice rolls, you add up the total number of seconds at the end, and that'll give you the total time for the race. And so, Dan, uh, Dan did go all out, so he's down to three stamina. So both of them have three stamina points left heading into this race. So basically, the way we're going to do it is they're going to they're go all out for the first leg, and then we'll see what happens from there to get a good start. So, all right, so they're both to the line here for the 1,500 meters. The gun goes off, and here we go. All right, so Dan O'Brien, 20. All out in the 1,500 meters is 64 seconds for his first leg. Uh, Dave's all out is 35. And his is a little bit faster. He is 54 seconds. So we have a 10 second lead here for Dave going into the second leg. They'll both do average for the second leg. 14 for Dan is going to be 58 seconds. And a 34 for Dave is going to be 54 seconds. Here's leg number three, the, first, the third 300 meters. Again, they will both uh, do average, but let me go ahead and uh, mark off the stamina for the first leg here. All right, here we go. Third leg, 33 uh, for Dan O'Brien is 63 seconds. And for Dave, he had a 34, 54 seconds. They're both going to go all out for the final 600 meters. 37 for Dan. That's a 64. So did not take advantage there. 15 for Dave. 54 seconds. And they're both down to one stamina point left. And they're going to use it on the final 300 meters. Here's the roll. 24 for Dan. All out. 61. And Dave with a 30. 55. So they both crossed the finish line. And it looks to me like uh, Dave won this going away rather easily. Uh, we'll add them up. 4, 8, 12, 15, 19, 20, 2, 8, 13, 19, 25, 31. Wow. So we're talking 5 minutes and 10 seconds for Dan. And then 4, 8, 12, 16 and 5 is 21, 2, 7, 12, 17, 22, 27. So divided by 6. So it's 4 minutes. All right, so Dave's time was 431, and Dan's time was 510. So this is going to decide it here. So Dan's time of 5 minutes and 10 seconds gives them only 504 points for that event. Eighty-five seventy-two. Dave, on the other hand, 4 minutes and 31 seconds, 700 
and 39 points. And so Dave winds up being your winner. 8,781 to 8,572. What a comeback by Dave. And it basically was the last three events, the pole vault, the javelin, and the 1500 that did it. So Dave defeats Dan in our decathlon challenge. Let's go back to the studio with a wrap-up. And we're back to start day number two. So we're going to go ahead and flip over to our day two side of the cards here. And so once again, uh, their stamina points have been reset to six. And because uh, Dan's injury or in day one was only an injury number one, he is recovered. And he is back at full strength today, at least to start out with. All right, first event is the 110-meter hurdles, one roll for each competitor, and they could choose safe, average, or all out. And they will both uh, choose, um, let's see how we want to, Dave's not behind by too much right here. So basically, but he really needs to, uh, he really needs to close the gap a little bit. But I don't think he is going to do it uh, here. So they're both going to be average for the 110 meter hurdles. So here's the roll. And it's going to be a 30 for Dan O'Brien. That is 13.60 seconds uh, for him. And for Dave, he rolled a 34. And so that's going to be 14.3. So... Dave is continuing to struggle here. So 14, so 1360 for Dan means 1,027 points. And for Dave, 14.3 uh, is 936. So there you see the, the scores up there. Dan has widened his lead now. Uh, to about uh, 257 points. So um, Dave's going to need to pick it up here a little bit. All right, so next up's the discus. Just like the shot put, three attempts, and you get your furthest one to count. Uh, Dan is going to go average here for his first attempt. Uh, let's see, decision time for Dave, because he is fair in the discus. They're both fair in the discus. Um, so basically, what we're going to do here is, uh, they'll both be average for the first attempt. All right, first attempt for both men here, 26 for Dan, as he goes average, 162 feet. So 162 for Dan, 37 for Dave, 172 feet. So Dave with the early lead here. All right, so second attempt. We'll do both average again. All right, 28 for Dan, 100 and... 61. So 161 for Dan. Dave rolled a 29. And that's 171. Alright, so the third attempt, um, they'll both go all out. They'll both spend a stamina point. And they both roll a 35. And what that means for both of them is that they scratched on their third attempt. So Dan's uh, farthest in the discus was 162 feet. So that translates to 857 points. And so Dave had 172 feet. And that translates to 921 points. So 
So Dave has closed the gap a little bit as they each are down to five stamina. And now it looks like it's under 200 points is the difference now between Dan and Dave as we head into the event that caused the real life event of Dan versus Dave not to happen. And that's the pole vault. So both of them are pretty good at the pole vault. So basically, to make things a little bit simpler here, and again, Dave is really has to pick things up here. Uh, they're both going to start at 15-1. So at 15-1, Dan has an 88% chance of making it. Dave has an 82% chance of making it. Dave is taking a risk here by doing so. But this will make things simpler uh, as far as dice rolls are concerned. And also, he really has, he can't afford to lose stamina if he gets too many attempts in. So both of them are going to start at 15-1. And both of them are going to start with an average attempt. All right, so here's their first, here's Dan and Dave's first attempt at 15-1 in the pole vault. Uh, 22 for Dan is 16-8. Uh, he clears that uh, rather easily. And Dave has a 26. And so 26 is 16 feet even. So that's going to work as well. So they both clear 15-1. So next up is going to be 15 feet 5 inches. Again, they will do average here. 24 for Dan is, that looks like, 15.5, so he just barely gets over, but he does get over. And so for Dave, Dave's a 32, average attempt, 14.9, so he misses on his first attempt. Okay, so the bar is up to 15.8 for Dan O'Brien, he's going to give average effort here. And this is Dave's second attempt at 15-5. So again, they're both, both each down to five stamina points with two events left after this. Um, let's see here. Um, and they're both good on the pole wall. We'll stick with average for Dave for his second attempt. All right, here's the rolls. All right, 18 for Dan. Average there is a 16 feet even, so Dan clears 15.8. Dave, on the other hand, is a 37. Average there, 37 is 15.5. I think that's a 15-5. Yeah, 15-5. So he clears it. So they're both going to move on to new heights here. Dan is going up to 16 feet. And Dave is at 15-8. So here's attempt number four. 23 for Dan O'Brien is... 15-8, that's not going to cut it, so he gets his first miss in the pole vault. Uh, 20 for Dave Johnson on an average effort. Average effort of 15-8. So he clears it. So now both of them are now at the 16-foot height. Dan is going to stay average as well as Dave for this one. All right, 36 for Dan, and it's no good. He does not, at the NG there, he does not uh, clear his second attempt. Uh, Dave Johnson gets a 26, and that is 16 feet even. He clears 16 feet. So the bar is going to go up to Dave to 16-4. 
Dan has his last attempt at 16 even. So he's going to have to go all out here. That's going to cost him a stamina point. Dave's going to stay average for 16-4. Here's the rolls. 16 for Dan going all out. But it backfires. It's only a 15-5. And Dan is done at 15-8. And he loses a stamina point. So let's take care of that right now. Dave, on the other hand, rolled a 35 on his first attempt at 16-4. So Dave, with a 35, an average attempt is, that says 16 feet 4 inches, so Dave clears that one. So Dan's done. Dave gets to go on, if he wants, 16-8. And this is his seventh attempt. So after this, it's going to cost him stamina points. So he's going to stay average at 16.8. 20. 20 at 16.8 is only a 16.4, so he does not make the first attempt. He's got two attempts left at 16.8. And he really needs to close the gap point-wise. So he's going to keep going. But remember, his last two attempts are going to cost him stamina points. So, we'll stay average again for the second attempt. And that's a 34. 16 feet even, and he's trying to get to 16.8. That's no good. So, there goes one stamina point for Dave. And so... We'll just leave average again. No sense wasting two stamina points if we don't need to. Here's Dave's uh, third attempt at 16.8. It's a 36. And it's no good. Or no, I, I looked at the wrong card. Excuse me. 36 on Dave cards also a no good. So, so both men are done. So basically, Dave wins the pole vault. Clearing 16 feet 4 inches, Dan cleared 15 feet 8 inches. So 15 8 for Dan is 849 points. And for Dave, who cleared 16 4, 910. And it goes even tighter. 7306 to 7174, but Dave is now down to three stamina points as we head to our final two events. Event number nine is the javelin. Three attempts, farthest one counts. So you see the stamina points there. They'll go average on their first attempt. All right, 25 for Dan in the Javelin is 201. So 201 feet for Dan in his first attempt. Dave is a 30, and that is 225. So Dave is making things interesting here. Second attempt coming up. Dave is going to stay at average. Dan, on the other hand, knowing he has to be 225, but his card's really not going to get it here, so he's just going to go average as well. Okay, so Dan rolled a 39. That's actually not too bad. 202 for Dan. So 22 for Dave. 219. All right. So 
So decision time here for both men. I mean, Dan's going to have to go all out to see if he can try to get a better distance here. Dave has three stamina points left. He's going to save him for the 1500. So here's the third and final roll in the javelin. 32 for Dave, for Dan, all out is a scratch. So he does not get a distance there. 34 for Dave, average, is a scratch too. So once again, no distance. So Dan's final distance in the javelin is 202 feet. And that is going to translate to... 762 points. So 762 for Dan. And Dave, his highest was 225 feet. We're going to have to turn the page here for that. 868 points. So look out how close the scores are. Only 26 points separate these two athletes heading into the 1500 meter run our final event in this competition five dice rolls in this one one for each 300 meters the numbers here are the number or amount of seconds that have elapsed you roll five you do five dice rolls you add up the total number of seconds at the end and that will give you the total time for the race And so Dan, uh, Dan did go all out, so he's down to three stamina. So both of them have three stamina points left heading into this race. So basically, the way we're going to do it is they're going to they're go all out for the first leg, and then we'll see what happens from there to get a good start. So, all right, so they're both to the line here for the 1,500 meters. The gun goes off, and here we go. All right, so Dan O'Brien, 20. All out in the 1,500 meters is 64 seconds for his first leg. Uh, Dave's all out is 35. And his is a little bit faster. He is 54 seconds. So we have a 10-second lead here for Dave going into the second leg. They'll both do average for the second leg. 14 for Dan is going to be 58 seconds. And a 34 for Dave is going to be 54 seconds. Here's leg number three. The, first, the third 300 meters, again, they will both uh, do average, but let me go ahead and uh, mark off the stamina for the first leg here. All right, here we go, third leg, 33 uh, for Dan O'Brien is 63 seconds. And for Dave, he had a 34 54 seconds. They're both going to go all out for the final 600 meters. 37 for Dan. That's a 64. So did not take advantage there. 15. For Dave, 54 seconds. And they're both down to one stamina point left. And they're going to use it on the final 300 meters. Here's the roll. 24 for Dan. All out. 
61. And Dave with a 30. 55. So they both crossed the finish line. And it looks to me like uh, Dave won this going away rather easily. Uh, we'll add them up. 4, 8, 12, 15, 19, 20, 2, 8, 13, 19, 25, 31. Wow. So we're talking 5 minutes and 10 seconds for Dan. And then 4, 8, 12, 16, and 5 is 21, 2, 7, 12, 17, 22, 27, so divided by 6, so it's 4 minutes. Alright, so Dave's time was 4.31, and Dan's time was 5.10. So this is going to decide it here. So Dan's time of 5 minutes and 10 seconds gives him only 504 points for that event. Eighty-five seventy-two. Dave, on the other hand, 4 minutes and 31 seconds, 700 and 39 points. And so Dave winds up being your winner. 8,781 to 8,572. What a comeback by Dave. And it basically was the last three events. The pole vault, the javelin, and the 1500 that did it. So Dave defeats Dan. In our decathlon challenge, let's go back to the studio with a wrap-up. So the handicaps were the difference here uh, to give Dave a victory by a little over 200 uh, points, uh, 209 points to be exact. But he did earn it because although Dave went out to quite a big lead in the 100 meters and then uh, in the long jump, but basically in the 400 meters, the running events, he did very well, but once you got to the discus, basically, Dave dominated the discus, and surprisingly, uh, the big upset was in the pole vault, because uh, Dan was known for his pole vaulting ability, but he did not get the job done there. Dave did, and then Dave cruised in the javelin and also in the 1,500 meters. Now, if you would have taken their handicaps away, let me do that real quick on my Excel uh, score sheet. And again, the handicaps are optional. You can choose to play with them or without them. But if you took out the handicaps away, the final totals would have been 8,734 for Dan and 8,662 for Dave. But like I said, the, uh, the handicaps were put in, uh, to, like I said, to just uh, basically normalize between eras. Uh, because, I mean, it could be argued that uh, Dan and Dave were kind of in the same era because they uh, competed uh, kind of around about the same time. Uh, Dan's was uh, from 92 to 98. Dave Johnson was from 89 to 95. But again, it's basically their handicap is basically if you were, uh, if you lumped all the card sets together and did a, com a complete decathlon event uh, with them all, the handicap is based on their average score compared to the average scores of the other uh, competitors in the set. So, but again, this is just for fun anyway. So, so again, you can determine for yourself who won today, whether it was Dan or whether it was Dave. But this gives you a look at Decathlon. And once again, like I said, uh, if you want to get a hold of this game, you don't have to Spend a bunch of money on eBay for it. Like I said, all you need to do is pick up issue number two of Sports Sim Magazine if you don't have a copy of that because the, the because everything you need for the game is there except, of course, the dice. Uh, you'll have to be creative as to how you do for that. I, I have seen some SI dice uh, available on eBay before and on other different websites. Some of them are reasonably be priced, others not so much. Uh, or like I said... The uh, dice roller that I used today, I will put a link to that uh, in the description 
of this video so you can find it there uh andy lewis has a bunch of great uh, dice rollers to use for various games uh if if you like uh, having an online version and you can use that either on a computer or i've used uh, i've used this dice rollers on tablets and phones as well all right so that is going to do it for today's decathlon event uh just coming up uh, i have an announcement uh, to make here uh join me live this coming tuesday august the 6th 2024 this coming tuesday at one o'clock p.m eastern time i'm going to be on with a live stream where i'm going to be demonstrating a uh, an upgraded version of a classic game that i've been play testing uh, here for the past couple of weeks i'm not going to reveal what it is at this point like i said all i'm going to say at this point is that it is a it's a it's a pc game but it is based off of a classic board game and this is the new version of it that is coming out and so hopefully uh, the developer of the game will be in the chat uh, take part in that as well again I'm going to be demonstrating this uh, new release coming up this coming Tuesday August the 6th 2024 at 1 o'clock Eastern time right here on Magic Sport if you can't join me live no big deal uh, you can you can certainly uh, watch uh, after the stream has concluded uh, just like you can all of my other videos and other things coming up in the month of August, uh, the Buffalo Bees roll on. The next home game for them is going to be against the New England Minutemen. I did not get a chance to get the games against St. Louis televised, but I'm definitely going to stream game one of the New England series. It's going to mark a monumental occasion for the Bees as uh, former franchise stalwarts J.R. Keel and Joe Barkdahl make their return visit to Buffalo in the series against the New England Minutemen. So game one is going to be streamed on Imagine Sport probably sometime during the week of August 12th. Uh, hope to get another episode of Old School Wrestling out toward the end of August as well. Uh, as always, uh, if you like what you see, hit like, uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Thank you so much for all of you that are subscribed uh, to the channel. And uh, once again, uh, from... The Imagine Sports Studios in Holidaysburg in the decathlon. Today, uh, Dave got the best of Dan with his handicap. 8,781 points to 8,572. From all of us here at Imagine Sports, this is Derek Jones saying thank you so much for watching today. Have a great rest of your day. And as always, keep on rolling. We'll see you later.